Okay, I'm going to try and end this whole topic about the 1 John 1 9 thing using the shark instead. I have to hold my head very still, though. See, this is really ridiculous. See, now I'm moving my head down and up and over and over. Okay, it seems I'm blinking my eyes. Okay, so you just, you know, if you see the shark stop moving, just keep listening anyway. I don't know what else to do. I can't get my cameras right. Ha! Ah, so how do we start this last part? Okay, here's the thing. If you don't use 1 John 1 9, you are in deep doo-doo with God because He only trains you and grows you while you are filled with the Spirit. See, the Spirit will not fill a defiled temple. I put all that in my videos from three years ago. Okay? The Spirit doesn't fill a defiled temple. So your temple has to be cleaned. The temple of your soul has to be cleaned. That's why they used it in the Old Testament. That's why they use it in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they had to bring an animal for sacrifice because the animal represented Christ to come. They looked forward to the cross. We look back on the cross. So we don't have to do the animal thing anymore. But we still have to name our sins to God. And if you don't do that, you get in doo-doo with God because the Holy Spirit can't train you. I mean, he can, but he won't because you're a defiled temple. All right? So what happens if you're a defiled temple? Well, you will get into all kinds of stupid things. You will think you're in the light, but you're in the darkness. That's 1 John 1, 6 and 8. You're making God out to be a liar. Because you're saying you're not sinning. You're not in a state of sin. So, honey, it doesn't matter how well you know the Bible. It doesn't matter if you've got all the works on the planet. Okay, now what is the shark doing? Okay, it doesn't matter if you've got all the works on the planet. It doesn't matter if you have all the doctrines right. You are in the darkness. Conversely, if you're between sins and you're wrong on half your doctrines, that's okay. Mom will build you. That's my nickname for the Holy Spirit because he calls himself a mother hen. Rachaf in Hebrew, Genesis 1-2. Okay? So the Holy Spirit has to fill you in order to correct you on where you're wrong. Otherwise, you never get the correction. And even if you're right on all the doctrines, that's what Paul was explaining in 1 Corinthians 13 and in Romans 7. Even if you're right on all the doctrines, but you're in the darkness because you're in a state of sin, state of sin. No matter how you're walking, how many good deeds you do, how many works around the church, no matter how correctly you cite the Bible, you're still out of fellowship with God. So all of your works and your hard efforts are wood, hay, and stubble, 1 Corinthians 3. That's the biggest penalty for not using 1 John 1 9 is that you have nothing to show for it. You wasted your time in God's. Now along the way he's going to give you other punishments for specific things that you're doing wrong as well. If you want those specific punishments to benefit you, because you'll get them anyway, if you want those specific punishments to bless you instead of curse you, then use 1 John 1 9 and sometimes God will take the body punishment away. Sometimes he doesn't. It depends on what you need to train you. Okay? So you get punishment down here. But the biggest punishment is that you're wasting your time. And then, of course, at the end, when you die, you get your report card, and you find out, oh, I, they, I wasted all my time down here, and I made a bad witness for Christ because you spent your life on works. Now, how do you tell if you're out of fellowship? Well, here's what I do. I ask God to remind me, you know, because I'll sin while I'm talking to you in the video. And, and he reminds me, oh, you screwed up there. Or maybe I don't recognize it while I'm making the video, but I play it afterwards. And then I, f I see where I made a mistake and I have to report that to you. And I do. Okay? He'll ask him to let you know when you're sinning. That's the first thing. The second thing is watch your own behavior. Do you start to stress, you know, people and things? 
uh, talk about your church attendance and what works you do and talk about obeying God and the commandments. If you stress that, then you're talking about works and what you do. And your mind is on people and things and not on God. And in the name of God, you're doing that. So you're spitting on Christ when you do that. You don't mean to. We all spit on Christ and don't mean to. Okay. So that's what you have to do is just ask God to please remind me when I'm sinning. Okay. And then pay attention to your own talk, your own behavior. Am I stressing what I do and how good I am? Am I stressing how good I am or how bad I am or how good or bad somebody else is? If yes, then you're probably in a state of carnality. Use 1 John 1 9. I mean, I have to use it all the time because I'm never 100% sure. You know, when I get stern or nasty with somebody, is it brain out or is it God? I'm never really sure, to be honest. So I always use the verse, and I'm like, okay, God, if I screwed up, please cause them to understand better anyhow in spite of me. And that's my biggest prayer for all you guys if you're watching my videos. I'm something of a poster child for how the spiritual life works, and how it works is just how Paul described it in Romans 7. Your mind is doing one thing. Your mind knows the Bible's right, but you find yourself doing something else. So then you're a shark, and you don't even know. Then you're walking in the darkness and you don't even know. That's what Paul was warning us about in Romans 7. And he's a mature believer when he writes that. And of course when he writes that he starts going south in his own spiritual life. By Romans 15 he's already justifying to himself why he doesn't have to go to Rome and why instead he can go to Jerusalem. And then he screws that up in Acts 18 through 22. You get that story. And he admits he sinned in Acts 22. My pastor ended up speak, you know, teaching a whole series on that called The F Paul's Fall. That was in uh, 1998, April to June of 1998, in 1992 Spiritual Dynamics, if you want to get it. So you could be spiritually mature and screw up and not know. And Paul sent Agabus to warn him in Acts 15. No, not Acts 15, Acts 18. 21, 21. Okay? Luke writes that down. So you see, you can really screw up and not know. And I never know. You know, I'm, I'm always like, oh golly, am I screwing up right now when I talk to you? You know, I'm paranoid about it. Well, but I can't afford to be paranoid about it. So God will make good on whatever I say anyhow in spite of me. You know, God forbid I should have been male and a pastor. It would have been much harder. So you see, you never know if you're scrolling up. You don't know if you're suddenly walking in the darkness. So use 1 John 1 9 like breathing. And that way, whatever you're getting wrong, the Holy Spirit will fix gradually. Just be in God's system. And you can't get in God's system if you're not using 1 John 1 9. And once you're in God's system, then you're using the Bible, you're learning the Bible, you're living on the Bible. And of course, if you're not studying the Bible, you're committing a sin. So you're not in God's system. If I didn't make it clear, yell at me. Peace out.